So after I made my video about the new player experience, I got to thinking, there has to be a better way. There has to be an experience new players can have that is better than the one Blizzard basically forces down their throats. And after many hours of testing, I found one. A way that utilizes some clever use of game mechanics, which, in my opinion, drastically improves the game for new players. Now, before I get into it, I want to say that nothing in this video is going to get you banned. It doesn't break the game or negatively affect other players in any way. It simply utilizes some game mechanics in ways that were probably not intended. First things first, when you log in, it will put you at the character creation screen. This is a trap. What you want to do is press the back button, then press change realm. We need to select a server. As stupid as it sounds, this is probably the most important decision you need to make, especially in the early game. Stay away from realms labeled new players and low population. Pick one that is at least medium population, if not high. But I would avoid servers that sit around the population cap because you could experience queue times. And if you're starting WoW to play with friends that already play the game, just pick their server. Now I'm going to skip to level 10, because the class you want to play is up to you, and Exile's Reach is pretty straightforward and will easily get you there. Once you get to either Orgrimmar or Stormwind, there's going to be a quest that will take you on a tour around the city. Do not pick this up. If you do pick it up, you will have to finish a short quest chain that takes you to either Zandalar or Kul Tyrus. And once you're there, you can head back to your faction capital and continue on this guide. So it's not a huge deal if you accidentally pick it up, it'll just waste a bit of your time. Now, what we need to do is unlock something called Chromie Time. Basically, what this does is that it lets you level through any of the expansions, instead of just Battle for Azeroth. However, Chromie Time can only be unlocked if you have at least one character at level 60 or above. Time to begin the shenanigans. It took me a little while to find a loophole, but I did eventually find one. Just note that you will have to have bought Dragonflight and paid at least one month's subscription to continue, which you would have had to do eventually anyways. What you are going to want to do is log out to the character selection screen and create a new character. The specifics of the character are not important. The only thing that is, is that you check this box that says Class Trial. If the box doesn't appear for you, don't worry. It takes a little while after you pay for Dragonflight for it to become active. Once you have your trial character, log into it, and boom, you now have a level 60. Log back out and hop on your real character. The NPC that had the quest I told you not to pick up now has a second option to skip the tour. Press this and head over to Chromie, located in these locations based on your faction. Alternatively, you can make a Drakthir Evoker and level through their starting zone to hit level 60, but that will take a bit of time. Give me a second to switch back over to my real account as I have no intention of paying more money for this second account from this point on. You should now be able to select which expansion you want to level through. You're going to want to select Cataclysm, and here's why. You're going to be leveling almost exclusively through random dungeons, and by selecting Cataclysm, it gives you access to the classic dungeons. These are good for a number of reasons, including they are mechanically very simple to understand. Many of them have a larger number of bosses per dungeon, which gives you more chances at loot. They all have quests inside them, which give you even more loot. There is a larger pool of classic dungeons than any of the expansions, so you are less likely to run the same dungeons over and over. They won't give you pieces of gear that are unusable to your class. And most importantly, they award the Satchel of Helpful Goods for completing a random. More on this later. You can also select a Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, or Mist of Pandaria, and you can freely switch between these at any time as you level. But to start, we'll just stick to the classic dungeons. And before you start queuing, Go to your city's quartermaster to pick up an Orgrimmar or Stormwind Tabard, depending on your faction. They are located in these spots. While equipped, it will give you rep for the faction when you kill things in dungeons. And getting to Exalted will get you a pretty big discount on your epic flying later. Now, to understand the next part, I need to briefly explain why I'm making this video to begin with. Basically, between levels 10 and 60, you are going to get progressively weaker. At level 10, you will be overpowered. And by level 59, you will feel like a geriatric old man trying to play dodgeball with a bunch of teenagers. This happens for two main reasons. The first is level scaling, which scales everything to your level, so you will be playing with other players from across the whole level spectrum the entire time. But this is not balanced very well. Or at all, really. There's not much we can do about this, so we just have to deal with it. The second problem is that each of these expansions was really only designed to cover 10 levels, and now, they're expected to cover 50, but the rate at which you acquire gear has not been adjusted. 
so you will outlevel your equipment faster than you get it. This is the problem we're going to tackle. Back to the satchel of helpful goods. You will get one every time you complete a random dungeon, and opening it will give you a piece of gear appropriate for your level. Now here's the second bit of tomfoolery. Don't open these. Put them in your bank instead. The reason being is that the level of the gear is decided when you open the satchel, not when you get it. And they will be much more helpful later on. Pun intended. If you're comfortable either tanking or healing, and your class is capable, then doing so can speed up the queue times. Just be warned, especially as a healer, that many of the players you encounter will be ADHD riddled speedrunners that will outrange you and die if you don't use every conceivable speed boost to keep up. And if they die because of their stupidity, they will likely blame and kick you from the group. At level 30, you will also start getting a salvaged cache of goods for each random. These are similar to the satchel of helpful goods, but after all my testing, they appear to scale when you get them and not when you open them, so don't bother saving these, just open them immediately. Like I said earlier, you can switch between the expansions to get different dungeons, which is nice to change it up if you keep getting the same ones over and over. And I know at least Burning Crusade, Wrath, and Miss of Pandaria will have quests in the dungeons that grant gear, in addition to giving satchels, though they may look a little different, so just be aware. Alright, continue this process until you hit level 50. Just 10 more levels to go. And at this point, I would suggest you stop doing dungeons, because of the level scaling issue I spoke of earlier. Go back to Chromie and pick an expansion to quest through. I'd suggest either Burning Crusade or Wrath, but it's up to you. Get some bigger bags from the auction house if you haven't already, withdraw all of your satchels from the bank, and get to questing. Now, the play here is to divide up your satchels by level. For instance, I ended up with 29 satchels, so I will open about 3 per level to help my item level from dropping too low and making the process a bit easier. With the rate at which you acquire experience, you should finish getting to 60 around the time you complete all the quests in one zone. But just for funsies, I have one more trick to help you out near the end of this grind. Now, this will take you a little out of your way, and is not necessary at all. But if you could really use a weapon upgrade, you can hearth back to Stormwind or Orgrimmar, go back to Chromie, and select Go Back to Present Timeline. I know this sounds stupid, but trust me. Also, while you're in town, this is a good time to pick up Epic Flying if you haven't already. Now. Head over to either Dalaran, the one in Crystal Song Forest, not the Legion one, or Shathrath, and head over to either the Amphitheater of Anguish in Northrend, or the Ring of Blood in Outland, located in these spots. You may need to turn low-level quests on in the map settings to see the quest markers, but basically, these are short quest chains where you just fight monster after monster. Make your way through all the quests, easily one-shotting all of your foes until you see the one that has a weapon for a reward. Do the quest all the way up until you're about to turn it in. But before you turn it in, head back to Chromie, select the appropriate expansion, then head back to the arena and turn it in. Thanks to the level scaling, the weapon is now appropriate for your level, and all it took was a few minutes of travel. And there it is, level 60. You can now play the part of the game that Blizzard actually cares about. When I leveled the character in the previous video, at this point I had an item level of 144. This time, it's at 174. And those 30 item levels can make a pretty big difference. And overall, the experience was much more enjoyable this time around. Now, I know the majority of the people who see this video will not be new players, and will not likely need this guide, so why did I make it? It's because I like WoW. I like Dragonflight, and I want it to do well. I want new players to not be off-put by this game. Yes, it has its flaws, but it's heading in the right direction for the most part. And if this video helps even one new player stay with the game, then it will have been worth it to me. I would love nothing more than for Blizzard to fix the leveling experience and make this video obsolete. But I'm a realist, so I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. Now to respond to some comments from the last video. And oh boy, did that one kind of explode. Nora said, I kind of wish you would have shared a real-time comparison of killing mobs instead of telling us how long it took. Good point. I wish I had done that as well. So just for you, here's me killing the same three mobs at four different levels. Which level looks the most powerful to you? The low level with two abilities, I and win, or the high level with an absolute arsenal of paper balls to throw at my enemies. A few people mentioned that I had tutorials disabled, which is true, I was being dumb, which is why I made this comment. So I hear you guys, and I'll try to do better. Shenanigans said, You're not undergeared by the time you hit 50. That's just when you hit Shadowlands expansion gear grind that is still there that should have been removed when Dragonflight hit. 
so you're not undergeared. The game expects you to gear grind before leveling from 50 to 60. This one made me scratch my head a bit. What you're saying is that I'm not undergeared, I just need to get more gear? Isn't that what being undergeared is? Michael said, undergeared at level 50? What are you even talking about? Who cares about level 50, like at all? It's just another level on the way to 70 where the game actually begins. I mean, that was kind of the point of the video. Blizzard clearly doesn't care about the lower levels, yet they still force players to go through them or pay 60 bucks. If the game doesn't start until max level, then why do levels even exist to begin with? Goddess Palace Athena suggested I use a guide. Thanks, but I'm good. The whole point of the video was to play like a new player would, and I don't think new players that are just trying to see if the game is for them would be looking at guides. Some argue that the game is too easy and that the latter levels aren't that bad. That's not really my problem with the game. I don't really care whether or not the leveling experience is easy or hard. The problem is that you start off being so powerful and by the end you feel so weak. It's the transition that I have a problem with. If the entire leveling experience felt like how 50 to 60 did, then I honestly wouldn't have complained as much. Wicked disagrees with me on comparing my item level to heirlooms, which is sort of fair, but in actuality, the gear you get from dungeons is actually stronger than heirlooms. In fact, it takes your heirlooms about two levels to catch up. Also, they don't boost XP anymore, they only make rested drain slower. Anyways, thanks for watching till the end. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. I got a few in the works already. Additionally, if you want to listen to me make a fool of myself, check out my series, Parsing the Truth. Link in the description. And as always, have a nice day.